During a brief service in Vietnam's capital Hanoi, those closest to the late president in his private and professional lives said goodbye. Family members of Tran Dai Quang, Communist Party leaders and government officials filled the National Funeral Hall. It was also a special moment for those on the outside who still played a big part in the service. To serve the state funeral of the president is a big honor for me and the staff, and all Vietnamese feel humbled to witness the funeral. Trung Dai Quang was just 61 when he died. The government said he was the victim of a rare virus. He rose to the top of Vietnamese politics through a career in the Ministry of Public Security. He appeared to bring that background to the presidency as he oversaw a crackdown on dissent. This is quite understandable uh, because uh, not only uh, was he in that position, the, the, the Minister of uh, Public Security, but he had grown up in, in, in this ministry. He also supported closer ties with the United States, hosting two US presidents during his brief tenure. Moving closer to Washington was perhaps a deliberate move in response to Vietnam's tension with China over territorial disputes in the South China Sea. The death of Trung Dai Quang means that Vietnam now has its first female head of state, with Vice President Dung Thi Ngoc Tin moving up to be acting president. The National Assembly is due to begin its next session on the 22nd of October, and that's when a new president may be elected. The late President Quang's last journey was in a long motorcade out of Hanoi and to the south. He was born and raised in a small rural community in Ninh Binh province, which is also his final resting place. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Hanoi.